When you think about coffee, what is the first name that pops up in your head? Chances are, it's Starbucks. From just one coffee shop in Seattle, Starbucks grew to be the $80 billion empire everyone knows and loves. In fact, with an estimated 30,000 cafes worldwide, Starbucks has cemented its brand in your psyche so much that when you think about going for a cup of coffee, you would immediately head to Starbucks. So how exactly did Starbucks get so big? That's what I will be explaining to you in our video today. This is Fraud Explained. To enjoy more videos, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell or else I'll be looking into you too. Just in the United States, nearly two-thirds of coffee sold comes from Starbucks. However, Starbucks was not always the booming coffee enterprise that we get to enjoy. Let's dive into its history to see what made the cafe the market giant it is today. In the year of 1970, good friends Gordon Volker, Seth Siegel, and Jerry Baldwin came up with the idea of setting up their own coffee shop. Volker was a writer, Baldwin was an English teacher, while Siegel was a history teacher. All three men went to the same university and were bound together by their passion for good coffee. When they began their journey, they decided to connect with Alfred Peet. Alfred Peet, founder of Peet's Coffee and the pioneer of custom coffee roasting in the United States, became their mentor. Pete taught the three friends everything there was to know about the coffee industry. And after long hours of learning, planning, testing, and consumptualizing, Starbucks was born. The very first Starbucks coffee shop opened in 1971 at Seattle's famous Pike Place Market. Pete supplied the friends with their coffee beans and connected them with coffee industry greats. Eventually, the three were able to set up their own roastery and find a source for their beans. Within the next 10 years, five more Starbucks branches popped up around Seattle. However, there was one thing missing. Coffee that people could actually drink. Even though coffee was a popular drink, most people really just drank it in their homes. Coffee shops were not a familiar concept, and there was not really much demand from the market to produce coffee drinks to be sold commercially. Because of that, Starbucks' sole focus at the time was to provide consumers with high-quality coffee beans and dissuade them from purchasing the typical instant coffees that could be purchased from the grocery. That all changed when Howard Schultz arrived. Schultz was Starbucks' first ever director of marketing and sales, and he was the one who pitched the idea of turning the coffee bean stores into actual cafes after his trip to Italy. Schultz said that during his trip to Italy, it was difficult to walk around without its streets coming across as a coffee shop. It seemed like the Italians really enjoyed going to a place where they could relax and leisurely enjoy their coffee and take in the environment that they were in. There was some sort of magic to it, he noted. He then decided to propose that the Starbucks shops in the United States should begin selling drinks instead of its usual bags of coffee beans. Schultz had left to start his own coffee chain, but he was chased down by the founder of the brand as he was told that Starbucks was at its best when he was a part of it. Pretty soon, Starbucks branches all over the country offered handcrafted drinks and began to grow even more because of it. It then became the front runner in the coffee industry. Schultz and his partners were soon able to buy Starbucks for $3.8 million, and it was during this time that Starbucks began to develop its own unique brand. Now, when building a brand, one of the key things that you have to remember is that replication is everything, especially when a business is in its first stages of growing. The replication of a customer's experience with their brand is vital to the brand's future success. Through replication, you would be able to establish your brand and what it stands for. Whether a customer's experience with your brand is good or bad, they will remember this experience whenever they come across your store and use it as a deciding factor for whether or not they will purchase anything from you for that day. Schultz recognized the importance of this and made sure to implement it through his marketing strategies. He focused on selling Starbucks as an experience. The brand grew so fast that by 1996, there were over a thousand Starbucks branches all over the United States. By that time, it had even expanded to Japan and Singapore. Schultz then assumed the position of executive chairman, and over the next few years, Starbucks was able to open 15,000 branches worldwide. Starbucks stalls began popping up everywhere, in airports, bookstores, malls, you name it. Starbucks became an ever-constant presence in the lives of consumers everywhere. 
From an average of $2 billion as annual revenue, Starbucks was racking in close to $10 billion per year. Starbucks branches were like mushrooms, sprouting up in any place that had the space for it. It seemed that there was no end in sight for Starbucks' continuous growth. That is, until the 2007 financial crash happened. During the financial crash, consumers had to choose between a bag of groceries or a cup of fancy coffee. Naturally, basic necessities almost always won, and demand for Starbucks went down. Additionally, due to the huge numbers of Starbucks stores all over the world, it was difficult for them to be able to get many customers for any given branch because you could literally find a Starbucks branch anywhere. In this sense, Starbucks was competing with itself. Due to the financial crisis, Starbucks stock price got reduced by 50% and its growing empire seemed to be put on pause. The brand was losing money. Fast. They did not know what else they could do to be able to lift Starbucks up again. They then realized that they needed to bring back Howard Schultz. During these years, Schultz was not as hands-on as he had been when he headed marketing, but bringing him back into the game was a smart move. It seemed that Schultz had made such a big name for himself in the coffee industry because of the mere news of him returning brought about a 9% rise in Starbucks' stock. People were beginning to have faith in Starbucks again. Schultz's next move redefined the way that Starbucks made coffee, and was quite possibly Starbucks' saving grace during the financial crisis. Remember when I said that replication is everything? Well, Schultz came to realize that in some locations, the staff were too busy working. In fact, they were so busy that sometimes they neglected catering to each of their customers' needs and to give them the quality experience that Starbucks had promised to deliver. To Schultz, Starbucks was not just about the coffee. It was so much more than that. It was about how all your senses were engaged the moment you stepped into a Starbucks store. It was the familiar walls and background of the shop, the aroma of freshly ground coffee beans, the light music, the lively chatter of all the other visitors, and the friendliness of the baristas and the crew all combined to give you the best experience in visiting Starbucks. Unfortunately, all of these factors were not consistently present in the Starbucks stores, which negated the concept of replication. To add to that, it seemed that in some locations, stocks were constantly running out by the time the afternoon rolled around. A customer could come in hoping to be able to get their favorite drink, only to be disappointed by its unavailability, and have to go home disappointed and empty-handed. Starbucks was in serious need of a makeover. To combat this, Schultz decided to make sure that all Starbucks stores had the same look and vibe. He vowed to ensure that all Starbucks locations had the supplies they needed to be able to craft the drinks that everyone so loved in order to be able to service its customers around the clock. However, Schultz did not stop there. External changes was not enough. He realized that he needed to make sure that the people who were working at Starbucks recognized their importance to the company and how they were a vital part of the Starbucks experience. He also decided to rebuild the image of Starbucks and re-establish the experience that people were initially attracted to in hopes of restoring the brand to its former glory. To do this, Schultz had to make some pretty radical decisions. Schultz then shut down about 600 cafes in 2008 and 300 in 2009, laying off nearly 7,000 Starbucks baristas. This was a harsh but efficient way for the company to endure its losses. Next, he required all Starbucks stores in the United States to close down for one afternoon so that he could be able to teach 135,000 baristas how to make Starbucks' signature espresso. He also committed himself to retraining the employees in how to make sure that each customer gets the signature Starbucks experience. In Schultz's mind, doing these steps would help consumers remember how much they loved Starbucks and would prompt them to patronize it as much as they did before. More than the drinks that everyone grew to love, Schultz wanted to sell customers the experience. Schultz brought back the in-house grinding of the coffee beans to make sure that the shops always smelled of fresh coffee. He also made sure to have all the staff trained in the art of customer service to make sure that the coming to a Starbucks would feel like coming to meet a friend. He also stressed the importance of making sure each barista knew like they were a vital part of the company and that the growth of Starbucks is largely due to the work and effort that they exert day in and day out. 
His plan worked, and pretty soon, Starbucks' stock continued to grow in value, soaring up to more than 143% of what it was initially worth. With the hard work of Howard Schultz and the baristas who believed in the brand, Starbucks has become the most successful coffee shop in the world. In an interview Schultz had done in London for Peter Fisk's book Game Changers, he had this to say. Success is best when it's shared. You have to be willing to share the spotlight with others. If you look at the entire history of our company, what we've tried to do essentially is build a company that would balance profitability with a social conscience, and that started with our people. What we try to do more than anything else is recognize that you can't exceed the expectations of your customers as an enterprise, unless you exceed the expectations of your people first. Starbucks is a coffee giant we know it as today, and it's mostly thanks to the work of Howard Schultz. He saw a promising small enterprise and decided to invest his time and effort into making it grow, and expand way bigger than anyone could have ever imagined it to. He not only squeezed his way into the company, but he even found his way to the top, and brought it to the success it is experiencing now. It was a result of his smart choices and risk-taking that Starbucks as we know it exists. So this should serve as an inspiration to put your faith in your decisions, and trust the outcomes, whatever they may be. If you were Howard Schultz, what would you do to make Starbucks a household name it is today? What would you have done differently? Let's talk about it in the comments section down below and I'll be responding to all your comments within the first hour. If you enjoyed this video, head on over to my other video on lucrative warfare and the benefits of war to see which institutions get a pretty hefty payout from wars all over the world. Stay tuned and stay educated.